What is up, players? It's War Boss Tail, but it's Mug. Welcome to part two, the final part of our how to paint a Man of War Shock Trooper for the Kador army. We are going to paint with Mephiston Red, Evil Sun Scarlet, Balthazar Gold, Lead Belcher, a bad, a bad, a bad, a bad, a bad, a bad, a bond black, Ceramite White, and Seraphim! Oh no, not Seraphim Sepia. Hello, Cassandora Yellow. All right, let's have some fun with this, guys. It's gonna be great. Master! 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 <clears throat> Igor? Is that you? Oh, Master! It's horrible! I just got back from visiting me old home in the Warhammer world, but it was all gone! I couldn't visit it anywhere because it had all exploded! Who the hell are you? Igor, there is no Warhammer fantasy world anymore. It's Age of Sigmar. <laughs> Alright, so we are starting. This is what our model looks like after the last video. We're going to start by building the colors back up with Mephiston Red. So as you can see, the really high glossy shine of the uh, Rhinox Hide has dried to a very cool looking dark dark finish there and um if <laughs> if we were going to be painting true to you know true life this is probably where we would finish our model you wouldn't really highlight the model back up because kador uh, as a very industrialized army seems to be a very well suited to a very dark oily looking uh finish i think their their war jacks and their uh, machines would look very dark and uh, grimy, like like they were very oily and uh, like they're used to being repainted and uh, the wear and tear of the battlefield. But basically, we're going to go with the more fantastical and uh, more interesting to look at color scheme of building the colors back up and making some really nice looking highlights. So as you can see, I am again using the Rosemary and Company two uh, brush and just loving every second of it. So if you guys have a chance, definitely check out the Rosemary and Company brushes. I can't sing their praises highly enough. I've never um, painted with a brush that I enjoyed more than, than these. So um, I'm, I'm also painting, I'm, you, can, you can't really see it because of the shield covering the model there, but I'm starting with a vertical downward paint stroke and I'm trying to be consistent especially with all of the long vertical armor pieces, like here on the leg. He's got a bunch. And um, I actually am going to paint the inner armor plate, the one right under this one, on the side of his leg in Mephiston Red 2, I believe, as well. Yeah, I, I think I, I did that with the other ones, and when I realized that I hadn't done it with this one, because this was supposed to be the test model, then I realize oh, I have to be consistent. It's such a small thing, you know, this one little armor plate. Who's going to notice if it's missing or if it's in silver and all the other guys are have theirs in red? Well, I'd notice. So it's just something you, um, you decide whether or not to do at some point. Be consistent. Always err on the side of consistency with all your troops. Don't be lazy. <laughs> I'm usually so lazy, but um, I, I really want to be you know, have a have a good consistent look with all of the models here so they look really good and the war machine starter kit i think is a hundred dollars which is considerably cheaper than the games workshop starter kits and you can play i believe right out of the box whereas traditionally with the the warhammer fantasy and the warhammer 40k stuff you you can have like little skirmish battles but you really need more figures to get going but um yeah, the more I read about the War Machine game, the more interested I am in it. I just don't think I'll ever really be able to play it. There's not much of a, a gaming group here where I am in California. Um, I, I'd have to travel pretty far to, to get a game in. But, you know, the lower model count makes my living situation right now a little bit more, um, I guess, feasible. It's, it's a little bit more feasible with my living situation as it is. I'm spending a lot of my, my time and money on school and I'm trying to get the, the studio what it needs to be even better. And 
um, what, what I'm actually thinking of doing is uh, just trying to really blitz for the end of the year to uh, finish a bunch of different projects that I've got on the table as well as try to bring in more projects. So if you are thinking of getting some work commissioned, I'd love it if you contact me. Um, the recent weeks have been a little bit uh, of a struggle for me to be on time with, with my projects. Unfortunately, because of, you know, I'm a one-man studio running a private operation and um, it's uh, it's been a little bit tough with school and, and everything finals for the last semester. Anyways, I don't want to make excuses, but um, I do love to work. I love painting different models and uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to just trying to blitz even faster and harder now that I've got the um, the airbrush in the studio. Did somebody say faster and harder? Lewis. Ah! Why must I? It's horrible. The entire world, they blew it all up. I know, Lewis. It's Age of Sigmar now. Age of who? What? Age of Sigmar. It's a new, um... It's the new Warhammer game. Fantasy 9th Edition? No, Lewis. Not Fantasy 9th Edition. That's that's not that that's not um that's not a thing. That's never gonna happen. Ah, get off my lawn. <laughs> they blew your lawn up, Lewis. Ah! You don't have a lawn anymore. <laughs> Oh boy, I tell you, two cups of coffee. <laughs> um, what am I doing? So we're still getting that Mephiston Red on in the um, front of the upper, uh, the upper leg armor here. You can see there's like three distinct armor plates. So uh, the thing you want to try to keep in mind when you're painting, when you're highlighting, is that you want to keep that shade in the, the recesses as much as possible. So I'm really just trying to find one angle, that one angle that I can paint uh, consistently for the different armor plates and leave that like darker color in the shadows. Same goes over here for the kind of boiler plate looking uh, torso armor. And as I'm painting up here under the vents, or around the vents, rather, I'm uh, kind of starting about halfway up and pulling the paint down. So again, we're going with as close to vertical um, paint strokes as we can. That way it's kind of consistent. When you look at the model, even though you're not able to see the individual paint strokes, you're really trying to uh, create a consistent look that all of the paint seems to be coming from the top to the bottom. And uh, even if it's just something that you notice as a painter, when you look at your model, I think it's it's good for your peace of mind to know that, you know, you're, you don't have a very random and haphazard way of painting your models. We, um, when, when you're talking about, you know, just the, the philosophy of painting and the uh, mindset of going in to do a paint job like this, I always like to have, you know, some kind of peace of mind when I'm working on these models and uh, doing consistent, I guess, styles of paint strokes from the top to the bottom is kind of one of the ways that my brain can wrap around doing these models, especially if you're assembly lining. You know, this unit is great because in the starter kit, it only comes with five guys. But if I was doing, you know, if there's a whole army of these guys on the tabletop, then like if there were Space Marines, you know, or Terminators or Centurions, and you'd need units and units and just spam these guys, it could get dr very draining after a while, as with any model. Um, like hordes of night goblins or um, Gretchen or Imperial Guard, uh, you want to find find the things that'll help you get through it. So here on the back the back armor, I'm trying to bring up the colors. There there's some tricky bits because over here over the <laughs> we'll call it the the butt vent, I'm going with horizontal strokes instead, just because it's a little bit easier to go along with the lines. You know, I'm trying to paint with the lines rather against them. If I was going with vertical strokes, I might be getting some of the paint onto the rivets, the silver rivets, or inside the vents, and that's no good. So um, just trying to suit the paint strokes to the surface. I don't know if any of you can tell me what, um, if you see on the, the middle of his back armor there, you've got that like silver arch 
what is that? What is that supposed to be? Uh, originally, I thought it was where the coal goes into the model. Because someone just like shovels coal into the back. So that is like a, um, like a furnace door, but it's like open. There's no hinges and there's no vent on it. So I don't know if I'm supposed to paint it black on the inside or do some like paint in like there, like it's the inside of a, of a furnace or something. Yeah, I don't know. So let me know, or, or is it supposed to look like that with that silver arch and then just more red armor on the inside of it? I don't know. It looks kind of, kind of odd and nothing that I could see from my, uh, my Google image search magic could turn anything up. So it's almost like uh, looking into a crystal ball to see what other people have done. Um, but going back to the vertical strokes, you can see that I'm, I'm going with vertical strokes for the uh, shoulder pads, because if I was to go horizontally, like from the center of the model out, then um, I think you would be able to see the paint strokes, the individual paint strokes, and that might not be um, the best thing. So uh, because it's such a large surface area, I'm, I, I went with what would give me the, the longest stroke length and um, be able to hide some of the individual brush strokes. Lewis, you better not. Don't touch it. I'm not. I'm distracted because I don't know what I'm going to do now that I have no house. What are you talking about? You live here with me. <laughs> you and Igor live here. I was talking about my summer home. Oh, uh, your summer home on, um, on Othuan? Oh, no, I, I don't, I don't touch those elves. I had a summer home in the Empire on the shore. It was a beach house where I could bring my hot lady friends for a romantical rendezvous. Gross. Okay, <laughs> moving on, we are um, painting here some more of that Mephiston red. And uh, I think I started on the shield when I ran out of, of, um, of disk space. So I, I let the red dry, which is why we're coming back now. And you see the paint is not as, as glossy as it used to be. I think this is a couple hours after I'd filmed the last video. So the paint has already started to dry, and uh, I'm, I put on another coat right over there on the, the shoulder armor. So that's still a little bit glossy, and we're just spreading it out, making sure that uh, even when you paint on with layer paints, you don't want the paint to pool and dry in puddles, because that's just not going to give a good effect. So again, using vertical strokes from the front to the back, we are making sure that we spread out our paint so that we don't see any obvious brush strokes. Okay, and again, this is a little bit later. You can tell kind of with the light change. A lot of uh, my, my work in between these videos is done cleaning up the lines. So, uh, I think I finished painting the interior of the shield off camera and now what I'm doing is moving on to the next highlight color. This is what Nick Idikbeer likes to call the pop color and um, I agree with him completely. This is the color that is really going to be the most obvious for your models. So um, depending on how many layers you paint. Another thing too is that what I'm doing is I'm painting on multiple layers and I'm painting on successive highlights in between video clips. This is not something that I um, that I really push for you to do if you want to get your army up as fast as possible. This is something that as an artist I want to do because it helps with the blend of the colors and especially because these models are uh, commissioned to be painted at a war master level. They're the highest level of quality I can put out. I pride myself on doing multiple consecutive layers. So uh, what I do is basically take whatever highlight colors I'm using, like the pop color, in this case Evil Sun Scarlet, and I'm adding it into the previous color which was Mephiston Red. And then I just slowly built up the color in, I believe I did two layers since the uh, previous video clip. So 
This is the final layer. It's just straight Evil Sun Scarlet all by itself. And as you can see, it creates a really bright um, red finish. Now, if you wanted to continue and go even crazier with the highlights, create points of light and all sorts of other effects, you would go on to a more yellowish or orange red color. I'm trying to stick to a very bright blood red. And um, if I wanted to paint the edges of the highlights into a very uh, bright finish though, then I would use something like, maybe not Troll Slayer Orange, because that's straight orange, but um, a nice red orange that I love using is Wild Rider Red, because it's called Wild Rider Red, but it's really more of a reddish orange color. Like the orange is so strong in it that if you use that to paint the edges and the highlights, then um, it, it might make your model look really nice. But I decided not to go that far up the color wheel. I wanted to stick to the red, and uh, that's why we're stopping here. But I mean, just look at how the camera picks up that color. That bright, vibrant red color is uh, just so cool. And it wouldn't look as eye-catching, I think, if you went straight up to Evil Sun Scarlet from like the beginning of the video when the model had just gotten the wash. You, you want to build up your highlights slowly and uh, over multiple layers. Say I did not have the patience to do that and I wanted to really just go up to this color. What would happen is if I went and uh, painted this straight from the shaded step, you would see that darker, grimy, muddy red in uh, the main parts of the body rather than just right now you can see it in all the cracks and crevices it looks like a black shade or line between the armor plates when really it's just a darker red color fading into a very dark brown but um, yeah I highly recommend you build up your highlight colors consecutive steps multiple layers and um, use less paint than you need the less paint you use the less paint you have on your brush the uh, easier it is for you to control it Again, I'm going to link to the music. I'm, I know we're almost halfway through the video, but I'm going to link to my tutorial music. If you haven't heard, I'm putting all of my tutorial music in a separate video. If you would like to listen to your own music to my videos and uh, listen to the sound of my voice, then that is up to you. Or if you'd like the standard Warboss Tay tutorial music, just click on the link in the description and it'll be like your back in 2012. <laughs> Oh, master, what are we to do now that our world is blowed up? Well, let's get yourself some round bases. Never! I'll never stand on a round base! Never, never, never! Man, they're, um... They are release so at the time of this video they are releasing the Age of Sigmar models really, really fast and furious. I I think the newest White Dwarf has the uh, the horn, the trumpet blower, and the standard bearer guy. And um, just so many models for the Stormcast Eternal faction out now. Stormcast what? In the new Sigmar faction. Louis, Louis, why am I even talking to you? I haven't read any of the fluff or fiction or background for Age of Sigmar. Uh. So you can see there's lots of different, um, I guess, surface areas on the lower, lower leg armor. I guess because of the curves. So you can really uh, pick and choose where you put your color to highlight. And uh, if you leave some of those darker shaded areas dark, then you'll create a nice uh, depth and a nice kind of transition between lighter and darker colors. It almost creates an optical illusion when you hold the model far away. Like right now, I'm, I'm looking at the model on this video screen on my computer, but the computer is... Um, on my table, and if I lean away from it, I can still pick up, my eyes can still pick up that bright red color, 
and uh, there's a nice contrast between the, that red and the silver as well as the uh, darker shaded red areas. That is such a good feeling, boy, when you are playing with a well-painted army on a table with nice terrain. That's like the best feeling. There's that leg armor that we just started highlighting in red. Okay, moving on to the back armor now. Basically, if I'm, if I, I guess mute the mic and cut my narration, it's only because I'm I'm looking at the video and realizing that everything I'm doing right now is just basically painting the Mephiston red step, but. Um, painting it within the Mephiston red. So when you're highlighting um, your models, every time you step up the color to the next progressive color, you want to paint within the highlight, uh, within the color you just painted. Yep, and here we are highlighting up the butt grill, the butt vent. So a lot of this step and a lot of this section of the video is really just doing exactly what we did before. I think the <laughs> one of the, the, the most important qualities to have as a painter that you learn to develop, especially if you don't have this quality, which I don't think I had much of, is patience. Because if I was impatient or I started getting distracted in my thoughts and not really paying attention to what I'm doing, uh, the repetition of tying these lines together, if I just wanted to, to get to a fast effect and um, or create these effects as quickly as possible, I, I think you're gonna, that's where you kind of see the difference between a beginner painter and a painter who devotes a lot of time into doing their work like this. And it's something I pride myself on. And I know it's something I had to learn over time is being patient with yourself, being patient with the models, um, thinking about what you're doing before you do it, as you're doing it, while you're doing it, and after you finish to kind of review what you've done. So as I'm getting onto the shoulder pad here, um, going along with that theme of, of patience and repetition, I'm remembering at this point, okay, so I, I used vertical strokes or I started from the front of the plate and moved to the back. How can I build upon the effect of the Mephiston red? And uh, even when I was blending the color into the Evil Sun Scarlet, how much of a color transition do I want? And where do I want it to be the brightest? And, and if I'm holding the model, where do I want those shadows to fall naturally? And where do I want it to look like the light is reflecting uh, naturally on the model? So I'm, I've decided I'm going to pull from the front to the back, but I'm going to leave some shadows um, next to that Kador symbol, next to the um, screw, screw port on the front there, that giant rivet area. And here on the side, what I'm trying to do is use the Evil Sun Scarlet as a top highlight and uh, keep and maintain that darker color around it. Again, if you paint too close to some of the other surfaces and you get your paint on, on there, there it, it kind of ruins, or not ruins, but it covers up the shadow. And I want to leave the shadow, you always want to leave the shadows to contrast your highlights.
So just as a reminder, this is a commission project that I'm working on for my studio, and I do provide a commission painting service. If you are interested, you can contact me at, um, you can e inbox me or email me or send a comment to this video, or you can email me directly at my, my work email, which is warbostastudios.com or warbostastudios at gmail.com. It's all one word. And, uh, or check out my website, warbostastudios.com. Especially if you're a new viewer, someone who hasn't really seen most of my work, I have a, a huge background and experience painting models and trying to share my work with the community. So uh, definitely, if you want to contact me for a quote, I have painted mostly Games Workshop models, but I've also done some um, privateer press. Even before this, I painted up a mercenary force with a bunch of sea dog pirates uh, a while back. And I've got experience painting fantasy and science fiction 40k. And yeah, I'd love to get as many projects as I can onto the, uh, the table. Here's where going on now. I'm, I'm repainting inside the shield and uh, using shorter brush strokes and really sticking to the center and trying to avoid as much as possible the that iron binding, the silver binding. This is, I think, for for this model in particular, this was this is the most difficult part because of how close or how small the red areas are. In the exemplar cinerators tutorial, you'll notice that there's a lot of different plates that are very close together. Especially, I'm painting the high exemplar Krios now, and his armor because he's a standard infantry size. He's not a warjack large um, figure. There is a lot of small areas to paint within the plates and uh, to keep that shadow going yeah, um, is a little bit more difficult. So you can get used to it. I think the best way to paint up a War Machine army, in my opinion, if you are thinking about getting into War Machine, start with the larger War Jacks, especially if you've got Colossals or, or large War Jacks, heavy War Jacks. Start with those because you are going to have so much of an easier time figuring out what colors need to be highlighted, what goes where. It's almost like training wheels for when you have to get into the war casters and the, the more infantry human sized units. And again, starting from back to front. Now we're moving on to Abaddon Black, and this is what we're going to be painting into the uh, eye slit, and we're just just going back over and painting in the black details. So the inside of that barrel for the shield cannon, which is just ridiculous. <laughs> a shield that also has a propulsion system and fires cannonballs is... Ugh. Igor, this monster. Now that you're back on the camera, you're back on back from a vacation, what, what do you think of the shield cannon? I think it's absolutely preposterous. Igor, we have to do another Igor and Friends video. I know, it's been too long. Have you seen Commissar Bane? No, I haven't. You know, Halloween's coming up. So that means Spooky Toberfest, don't you? Oh, goody. This year, I want to go as Captain Jack Sparrow. I don't know if we're going to be able to make that happen. All right, lead belcher is silver. So what we're doing is we're bringing up that iron, the silver iron. But the uh, the goal is we want these guys to look very much more 
hard, bitten, weathered, um, really like utilitarian, very grim, <laughs> lest I say grim dark. Um, so the silver is going to stay looking oily and dirty and weathered. So even though we're using Lead Belcher as a highlight, we're not going to move all the way up to Rune Fang Steel. We don't want anything to look very much, uh, very much at all bright or uh, shiny. It, we, we want it all to look very well worn and weathered. Why Captain Jack Sparrow? Because, Master, I just rewatched the Pirates of the Caribbean Marathon. Ah. So we're just re going, uh, repainting, going over all of the silver areas, and uh, it's it's great to see the darker silver around your highlights, and then to see that highlight just catch the light, you know, especially with metallic pigment paints. Um, I'm not really a fan of the the non-metallic metal look. I think for character models, it's 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 fine and it's great, and it really shows off your your skills as a painter. But it's so so time consuming and you really have to look at the model from from the right angle and um in the end i see i feel like the returns are 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 comparable or not as comparable to the the investment that you put in i find just having a good metallic paint like the games workshop silver range or, or even the vallejo gold range the liquid gold stuff having that on your model is just as good if not better than a good non-metallic metal paint job. You know, it's not for everybody. There's people who's, who think non-metallic metal is really the best way to go and that your your models are, are rubbish without it. But um, I prefer my models to shine any way you hold them and to have them continue to shine and, and catch that light as you turn your model in your hand. A lot of non-metallic metal stuff looks so good when it's in static poses. It's just sitting on the table and you're looking at it. The minute you pick it up and start turning around in your hand, and you realize, oh, it's just an optical illusion, the um, metallic effect, then I feel like, eh, kind of loses something for me. But to each his own. To each his own. Painting on the barrel on that cannon there. Silver on the toes. Now, yeah, we're going on to the gold effects, and so we're, we're going to stick to the Games Workshop Balthazar gold for our gold effects, because I want our Kador models to have a different kind of gold effect than the Protectorate of, of Menoth one. So Balthazar gold is very good as a gold color. If you want to move on to the newer stuff, I've heard really good things about the Retributor armor and uh, their, their newer gold stuff that they released for the Stormcast Eternals. But I found just good old Balthazar gold as a reddish gold, bronze looking uh, gold color is is perfect, especially for Kador. Uh, there's just something about that more reddish coppery brass gold that blends really, really well. If I went all the way up to the yellow gold of, of the Vallejo Liquid Gold series, I don't think it would look as, as, as good because it would look too clean, too rich, and too... Um, too expensive for what should be a very um, militaristic and utilitarian, darker, more weathered looking paint scheme. We are really coming up to the end of this model and um, I think he looks great, you guys. If, if you can assembly line your five-man squad of Manowar Shock Troopers, then there is really no no part of this paint job that I think 
a beginner could not do. If you are a beginner painter and you want to cut, cut down one of these, these steps, I would definitely start by cutting or shaving down your time by cutting out some of these highlighting steps and sticking to maybe just part one of the video uh, or of this paint job. If you want to just get your models out onto the table but have them look good, a base coat and a wash, simple enough, anybody can do it. The washes, like I mentioned in another video, are like a uh, talent in a bottle and they really step up your game and they show, um, they, they add depth. The thing that's really gonna show that contrast and that depth though are these final steps. I mean, just look how cool the model looks now that we are bringing back that gold step. Ah, oh, I fell down. And um, highlighting those, the gold armor. When, when you contrast that, the bright shiny gold metal off against that bright red it just makes the model look so cool and makes it look so good and uh, when you get the model out on the table it's it's really going to uh, be impressive so i'm very happy with this i hope the client is because this kator model is uh it's one that i take great pride in i did a fluff hunters video you might have seen it it's pretty ridiculous uh <laughs> yeah just a bunch of pictures on a slideshow than me talking in a ridiculous voice. Abaddon Black, going back to Abaddon Black, I think we're going to paint in under the sh shoulder pads. You see there's a little bit of, of dead space, so there's no reason for it to be red. So what I'm doing is I'm, I'm painting in the black there and creating the optical illusion of there being no space, nothing but darkness under that shoulder pad. So we're going to do that on both sides. If you haven't painted Abaddon Black in the um, in the eye slits, that is also something you might want to do. So yeah, because I've been really um, pushing to get the commission studio up and going, I uh, want to provide high quality service for my clients. I really want to provide a good experience and um, things have been taking a little bit longer than I originally anticipated. Projects are, are uh, taking a little bit more time because I want to um, I want to give the customer products that I would be proud to have in my collection. I think a lot of a lot of commission painters, they especially some of the bigger studios out there, they go for uh, quantity. Of paint jobs, they want to be more. Be, to them, success is getting projects in and out of the door as much as possible. And I think there's a balance between doing that and providing uh, personalized, quality worksmanship that um, that that you can put your stamp of approval on. And that th the worst thing for me is if a customer commissions me to paint something, and I do it. In, and knock it out in like one or two weeks, get it back to them, and then when they get it, even though it might look good when, I, when I'm filming it or when I'm showing them pictures, the minute you turn it and look at the angles, seeing that it, it just does not look good, um, I really want my models to go that extra step. Speaking of extra steps, you will see that I painted in the chest vents and in the back uh, chimney smokestack, I painted um, ceramite white. and. The reason for that is because we are going to create some, some a, a very simple object source lighting glowy effect. Right now what I'm doing is I'm taking some lead belcher, I'm letting that ceramide white dry, and I'm just painting in some final silver details. I think I got a little bit of red on the shield there, so I'm, I'm painting over that. And uh, there are rivets on his tabard, which I must have missed because that was the main reason why I'm going in right now. There are, you see on, on the, the little tabard in front, hanging in front of him, uh, there are some, some rivets. So I'm just going back and looking at all the silver details. Got to make sure you get them from every angle, just in case somebody picks up the model and turns it around. You don't want them to be like, oh, who painted this? I don't, I don't want to ever commission them. And then what we're going to do is we are going to paint in, uh, after we get the silver all done, we are going to paint in the vents and any area that we put with white, we're gonna paint that with Cassandora yellow. And you might remember from my Ogre Firebelly video, all I did to do the flame effect was I painted it all in white and then I put Cassandora yellow. We're doing the same thing. Uh, you wanna err on the side of a little bit more because you don't want the white to 
peek through. On the opposite hand, you don't want to put in so much that that yellow just pools and bleeds all around. It, it creates a good effect when it is completely contained in the white area. And uh, it's a little trick that I uh, would love to see you guys implement and use. And it's so simple, it's so easy, it creates a very subtle glowy effect. And uh, there you go, thumbs up. Very pleased with him. And I want to thank you guys for watching and um, for interacting with me and um, you know, writing comments, hitting the like button, subscribing, telling all your friends about my channel. Yeah, boom, 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 boom. Happy Man of War, Shock Trooper. And there you go. Thanks for watching. And Master! Master! Yes, Lewis. And we hit the clubs now! Alright.